The clothes is done washing. Ugh, I'm greasy. I need to take a shower. I got a gift or some product. Lucky. Sorry, need to clarify. Eve sent me these two for free. They are not sponsoring this video though, so everything within this video is my own opinion. Let's go. So I asked Eve if they could send this stuff over because I'm planning on redoing my washroom of uh, where the washer and dryer is. It's not that big, it's pretty small, but um, there's a few things, tweaks that I need to make to it to make it a little bit more convenient and I'm gonna need these two things to do it. There you go. I'm gonna need a smart plug and I'm gonna need this light strip. Very fancy stuff. Oh, wait, there we go. But you're probably wondering, what am I gonna do with this stuff? It's only two products, what could I possibly do? Well, I may be getting more stuff, not from Eve particularly, but in general. Here's a problem I'm trying to solve. I need to find a way to make my washroom smarter. And since my wife does most of the laundry, I'm gonna need her buy-in on these changes. So let's talk to her to see what features she would like. So I have a question for you. In the washroom, or a tiny little makeshift washroom, what would you do to make it more convenient? Because the washer beeps when it's done. No, it doesn't. But you turned it off. You turned it off? Yeah. Why? Because it's in the big hallway, and the anxious mom brain in my brain went, it's gonna wake her up if it makes sense. I see. But there's also moments, there are days where I wash early in the morning and so I wouldn't hear it even if it did go off. Mm -hmm. So it's washing at like three in the morning. Would a light system work for you? No. Why not? Uh, a light system in what way? So if you pass by the closet, you'll see the green light knowing that it has been done. That's very subtle. The light stays on. So when I mean, you pass it, you can see it. Give it a shot. I okay, just, so I'll, I'll, I'll add that too. I'll add a verbal warning as well. Hello there. My wife doesn't sound too enthused. Then again, she's not really into tech, and I feel like everyone in my position or every one of you who are, you know, into this tech, you may have similar outcomes uh, that I'm having now. To give some transparency, I haven't created this yet. The washroom isn't done. It's not done. Like, I'm still in the middle of editing the video, but I'm editing as I go along. It behooves me to make sure that I wow her. She does not wow easy, and even when she is wowed, she's like this. Wow. I'm gonna do my best, I'm gonna do my best. Okay, back to it. See, I was using this one. This is TP Link. It works okay. It goes offline every now and then. I'm not sure why it's blinking blue though. Um, but I'm gonna replace that one with this from Eve. So I started installing the plug, but things did not go as planned. The plug says that it works with Apple Home and that's 100% true, but this is my first Matter device and I was completely ignorant of its implications. For example, my smart home ecosystem revolves around Home Assistant and for any device that connects to Apple Home, I'm technically able to connect to Home Assistant with no problems. Since this connects via Matter, I can't import it into Home Assistant's HomeKit controller. Uh, instead, I have to go and connect it via like Home Assistant's Matter, but um, I was able to do that with some difficulty. However, the main reason I got this plug was because of its power metering. I wanted to create automations based off of the energy um, so I can know whether or not the washer is going. Um, but I didn't realize that Matter doesn't support power metering. And after doing some more digging, I even find out that the power consumption isn't viewable anywhere else except within the Eve's home app or their proprietary app. Uh, and even within that app, I can't really create automations based off of the power consumption. Okay, so I technically can't use the plug for what I want. How about the light strips? Since this doesn't use matter, this worked perfectly. Like I had zero problems setting this up. Um, and I, I literally had this running in Home Assistant within like five minutes. Uh, everything worked good, but there was just one problem. Uh, it's just a little over six feet tall. 
silly me, right? I thought this was going to be long enough to go from floor to ceiling and have a little bit left over. But this is only 6.6 .6 feet and it says it here on the box, but in the corner, in the parts that I technically don't read. So technically this was my bad. Neither of these, the plug nor the strips, are going to work for what I originally envisioned. But now that I'm thinking of it, since I've kind of experimented with both of these, um, I think I have an idea of how I'm going to use them and take advantage of it. But first, let me finish with this laundry room real quick. If you guys are enjoying this video and any of the other videos you see on this channel, I would really appreciate it if you guys can click the subscribe button and the like button as well. A lot of this helps out the channel in terms of helping other people find it. And it also helps me to know that you're into this stuff, that you like the content that I'm putting out. So again, I really appreciate you guys. Let's get back into it. Okay, so here are the devices that I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need to use a door and window sensor. I'm gonna need the smart light switch for the laundry light a vibration sensor for the dryer, and a smart plug for the washing machine. Now, this smart plug is gonna replace the Eve. I actually don't know if it's going to work. Like as of editing this, like I'm in the middle of editing, I haven't tried anything, I'm editing as I go. I don't even know if the car plug is going to work the way that I need it to, but we're gonna find out together. First, let's start with the overhead lights. So the first step in all of this is to cut the electricity to the laundry room. Now you would think that cutting these two would turn off the power to the closet, but as it turns out, the circuit was here. Silly me. So I managed to get the plate covers off and expose the wires to the old switch. And I did make a funny discovery while struggling with this light. Uh, the home that we're in was built in the 1960s, so I thought that it didn't have neutral wires. Turns out it did. The end. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go. This looks like the ground. This is the load. And it looks like we have both the live, and I think this is a fan. But I'm not an electrician, so we're just going to make it work. And make it work, I did. So we're going just to test it. My wife was supposed to yell if something happened. Let's see if this works. It does. <laughs> All right, let's clean everything up. Now the door sensors. This one was simple. Just stick it on. Next, the vibration sensor. Just stick this one on too. Lastly, the plug. You guessed it, stick it in. Okay, so here's what I have in the laundry room. So first I have an Amkara vibration sensor. This is on the dryer, so that way if the dryer is moving and rumbling, it'll vibrate and let me know that it's on. And I'll go through the automation that I have for it. Next I have an Amkara light switch, which controls the light up here. Observe. Nice. Nice. So this is basically gonna be used as part of the automation for when the door closes, which brings me to the Amkara uh, door sensors. Uh, when the door opens and closes, it's going to control the light turning on and off. Uh, and then lastly, I have an Akara plug, which is attached to the washing machine, which is going to help me figure out when the washing machine is in use. Uh, there are times I thought about putting the vibration sensor on it, um, and I guess that's another possibility, but I wanted to try out the plug just to see how that would work out. Um, hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, then I'll probably just get the motion, the vibration sensor and then see how that works out. And to be honest, I don't even know if the vibration sensor is going to work out well for the dryer, because when the washer reaches the spin cycle, it vibrates enough that the sensor picks it up. So I'm going to have to sort that out in the automation, but we'll see. With all the pieces in place, I just need to add the automation. So there are two automations I need to create. Now I wrote this list here so that way I don't go down this rabbit hole of uh, automation creation. So um, let's kind of review it. Now the first one here is to basically control the laundry lights. The idea is that when you open the closet, the lights will turn on for five minutes and then automatically turn itself back off. And then you can also manually hit the light switch and that will turn the lights on for five minutes and then it'll also turn itself back off, assuming you don't close the doors. Now, if you close the doors at any point in between that five minutes, it will turn off. And additionally, you can also click the light switch to turn it back off and it won't mess up the automation. 
Okay, so the second automation is supposed to let the occupants know that the clothes need attention. So whether it's the washer or the dryer, the automation is supposed to send a message to K, which is the virtual assistant. It's also supposed to announce it on Google speakers, and it's supposed to change the status lights to green. Um, now, this one is going to be a little bit more difficult, partly because I don't know what the settings are supposed to be for the dryer and the washer in order for these automations to trigger, but we're going to figure that out. Now, using the car plug for the first time didn't work. Um, I wasn't able to see the power consumptions, but then after some intense Googling, I realized that integrating the Acara plug through the Acara app or through the hub uh, doesn't work. I have to integrate it directly into Home Assistant using the Zigbee dongle, which I have. So um, once I did that, I could see the power readings. And the next hurdle was then figuring out uh, what conditions to set the power to. Now, this took several days, partly because I just needed people to do the laundry and just see what the average uses look like. But after I kind of gotten like after about two days, I was able to kind of figure this out and was able to see what the power spikes were like. To deal with the dryer was another thing entirely. As you know, we have the vibration sensor, but the vibration sensor did not work as expected. Apparently it will stay active for a period of time and then it'll turn itself back off. And then after the cool down, it'll turn itself back on. So what you tend to see is a lot of spikes where it shows vibrations and then no vibrations and vibrations and no vibrations. So I did find an alternative though. Once I connected the sensor directly into Home Assistant through the Zigbee dongle, I could see the temperature settings of the sensor. I think I'm going to use the temperature as a way to determine whether or not the dryer is actually going. So with all of this in place, I managed to turn the laundry room into a smart laundry room using all Acara products. But what happened to the Eve products though? Well, the light strips came in handy. I added them around the bed to act as an indicator light, as well as an ambient light for the room. Essentially, when the Acara products detect the washer and dryer is done, the lights in the bedroom will adjust so that we have a constant visual reminder that the laundry needs to be attended to. The automation will only change the lights between 9am to 12am and if this laundry alert switch is active. washing on a scale of one to ten with ten being i love it zero being i hate it how did you like the laundry room before i mean i guess i'll give it a five i was indifferent it had indifferent. the laundry stuff in it i used it for the laundry i was meh after making some of these changes is it still at a five is it at a did it go down to like a three <laughs> yes michael because putting extra lights in or switches made the laundry room worse uh it's an eight i guess an eight okay i yeah. guess that seems like a very indifferent eight uh, is this something that you would recommend to people to have that's a that's a question um as someone who's not very into technology, has this significantly made my life better? Not really. Okay. Is it? All right. Is it, an, is, is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Wait, I wasn't done. I wasn't. Done. So there are a few things that could be done to make this a little bit better. The first thing I notice is that I probably want to change the vibration sensor to an actual temperature sensor. The vibration sensor works well, but I think it's meant for vibrations and for short periods of time. When the vibration sensor is constantly pinged, I suspect that it may be draining the battery a little bit faster because currently the battery is sitting at seventy percent. If the sensor is going to constantly go off and it's meant to only go off in short bursts. My guess is that the temperature sensor would yield a little bit more accurate results, seeing that it's meant to do this type of long-term type of sensing. 
The other thing I would change is I would get more light strips. I was low key sleeping on light strips and uh, I thought they were kind of gimmicky, but realistically, I, I really like them, especially the ones from Eve. They're very bright, easy to use. And then in terms of utility, it's actually a pretty good indicator. Um, so having it to change colors does help. The only downside to using just color changing lights like light strips is that you have to remember what the colors signify. So that may be the only burden of using like light strips in that capacity. But beyond that, I still think it's pretty fun and very useful. The last thing I'd probably change is the door sensors on the closet. Now the door sensors worked well in terms of just being very quick and straight to the point. But the problem is that it doesn't sense when people are there or not. So you have to use a timer within the automation to turn things off and on. Using a motion sensor would be better as it can just trigger the lights when it detects motion. And because you're changing clothes and you're moving things in and out of the dryer and washer, it's big enough motion that you're not gonna have an issue of it just not seeing you. Because there was no real problem, I don't think this hit the bar I was hoping it would hit and resonate strongly with my wife. To be honest, the space that we have for our laundry is a very small space, so there's not much that really can be done. Maybe over time this may grow on her, who knows? I'll keep you guys updated. But that's it for this one. If you like this video, please, again, consider subscribing and hit the like button. There is a Buy Me Coffee link in the description for those of you who would like to show some extra love and feel that this video is worth it. Okay, so I think that's it for me. Okay, bye. Oh, you thought I forgot about this. I didn't. I'm currently using it to power these lights. Hey Google, turn off the desk lights. Sweet.